Let's begin this morning with the economy. Inflation in the U.S. rose four-tenths of a percent in April. That's according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, which released its latest CPI report this morning. Inflation is also up 4.9 percent year over year. That's a slight cool down from the 5 percent back in March. So I want to bring in Javier David to break down what these numbers mean. He's the managing editor for business and markets at Axios and a CBS News contributor. Like, it's so funny because I wanted to like, I wanted to weave Beyonce talk into everything. And I was like, speaking of inflation, have you seen the price of those tickets? But we won't. We're going to, we're talking straight numbers. What do the latest uh, numbers say about the state of the economy? Well, the takeaway is, um, it's the inflation is checking mostly as it expected. Um, it's not moving as quickly as the Fed would like, but it's decisively moving in the right direction. Uh, we just came out of the Fed's meeting. They've got another one in June. Uh, we were hoping that maybe uh, last week they would pause. June might be the day where they finally sort of give us the indication that they can take a breather. Uh, the market would like that. Uh, but, you know, the jobs data that we get this week will likely... Uh, be the decisive tipping factor. And we'll get another inflation report before the Fed meets next month. Uh, but all told, you know, you have an economy th that is slowly but surely um, losing steam. And that means that all the price pressures that we've seen um, are starting to moderate, but moderate yeah. is not the inflation being defeated altogether. Yeah, I, you know, I can't help but to think of like the magic eight ball, right, where it's like all signs point to. And it seems like all, pretty much almost all of the recent reports are suggesting that things are slowing still higher than it was the year before or what depending on what you're sort of watching but it's it's moving in the right direction i mean but still far from the two percent so you know what more does the fed need <laughs> the fed at this point i think wants to see the jobs market in particular mm. start to oh, um even though the number that we got uh last month uh was fairly like um, in where we needed it to be. Uh, the basic thing is people are still making money. People are still able to get out and get right. jobs and paying them more. That entices them to spend more. That is very stimulative for the economy. That keeps demand elevated. It does all of the things that we uh, talk about continuously on this program, which uh, lead the Fed to not be comfortable with where the economy should be in this cycle, particularly as we sort of stare down the barrel of a recession or what people think is going to be a recession at some point this year, might be sooner rather than later. Uh, but the whole the whole ball of wax is um, to the extent we can get continued consumers to stop spending, businesses are already pulling back. Um, and that is not anything that anyone is disputing at this point, but it's really consumers that continue to spend, continue to charge credit cards, uh, continue to buy airline tickets and all of these service things that keep price pressures elevated. Javier, I feel judged. I feel judged. Sometimes you need to buy an airline ticket. Sometimes you need I, to get away. I, 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 lest I be accused of being a hypocrite, I also... <laughs> all right, let me ask you about something else that may have an impact on the economy. As you know, uh, President Biden and Congress are wrangling over this debt ceiling. And once again, we are inching closer and closer to the deadline where we will run out of money and we'll, and you know, there's, there's the, the threat of the U.S. defaulting on its debt. How could this have an impact on the economy, even if we don't go over the edge, if we come very close? Yeah, we're in an environment where interest rates are considerably higher than they were when we were having this sort of game of playing chicken back in 2011, 2012 with the Obama administration. So the TLDR is, I think the current environment is going to force the government and the powers that be to kind of come to a deal. I think everyone agrees that it would be absolutely catastrophic. Already the debt ceiling debate is playing out in a lot of ways. Uh, in the short-term part of the bond market is wreaking havoc. Really, the bond market is reaping the whirlwind of all of this. And I think it bears mentioning something we don't talk about enough. Federal spending is inflationary. And all of the talk that we have, and people really need to realize to the extent that the government is continually pumping money into the economy, that keeps demand elevated. That keeps prices elevated. So I think we're probably, you know, I, I don't want to overplay it, but I think that we are inching toward a consensus that something has to be done about spending. For the first time in a very long time, I think 
the contours of a deal will include something that President Biden has been resisting, which is somewhere along the way, the government has to cut back on what it's spending because it's not helping the Fed in this fight against inflation. Yeah, heavier. It's a really good reminder. I mean, that's kind of a little bit how we got this ball rolling is all that stimulus money to help and keep to keep the economy afloat during a very dire time. Uh, Javier, David, thank you very much. Thanks.